Yellowstone earning. Normal life within 500 miles is impossible. The Yellowstone supervolcano poses a grave threat to the U.S., with experts warning that normal life within 500 miles of the volcano is impossible, post-eruption. Yellowstone is one of a dozen supervolcanoes on Earth, each at least seven times as powerful as Mount Tambora, which produced the largest eruptions in recorded history. The supervolcano has a Volcanic Explosivity Index VEI, of 8, the highest value on the index. In the last 2.1 million years, Yellowstone has erupted three times, the last occurring approximately 640,000 years ago, and is 1,000 times as massive as the cataclysmic eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. The main feature of the supervolcano is its large magma chamber, the reservoir underground filled with flowing hot rock. Yellowstone is said to be due to an eruption based on previous eruption cycles, although it is generally accepted that anything in the next 10,000 years is unlikely to happen. However, this did not stop field workers from modeling potential eruptions. As explored during the Naked Science documentary, Supervolcanoes. It is here that Eric Myers, the documentary's narrator, reveals how post-eruption life within a 500-mile radius of Yellowstone will cease to be normal. In 2004, scientists looked at the effects of past eruptions and used them to predict what might happen to any modern eruption. While the eruption itself would be devastating, Mr. Myers explained, for those who survive the explosion, it could be worse. DNA evidence suggests that the last supervolcano eruption created a mini ice age that nearly led to the extinction of mankind. He continued, the Yellowstone supervolcano eruption will cause widespread devastation across the United States. On the first day, those who avoided the initial explosion would encounter pyroclastic flows that would sweep through Yellowstone, destroying nearly everything within 60 miles. Three days after the eruption, normal life within 500 miles of the volcano was impossible. Within a week, the U.S. center would be buried under a thick carpet of ash, killing thousands of people with a painful lung disease. Professor Michael Rampino, a geologist at New York University, considers how the deadliest part of a supervolcano eruption is the gas that remains in the air, not the ash that falls to the ground. He visits an old gravestone in New Hampshire which reports the events of 1816, the year known as the Year Without a Summer. Severe climatic abnormalities caused the average global temperature to drop by 0.4 to 0.7. Evidence suggests that this was caused by the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora, the most powerful eruption in recorded history. Professor Rampino said, This is a wake-up call to a farmer named Reuben Witten who saved the city of New Hampshire by growing enough wheat on his land to feed the community. There was snow in June and frost in July, and again in August, which killed most of the wheat in the lowlands. But Reuben Witten managed to grow enough wheat in the highlands here to feed the town. In 1816, the growing season in New Hampshire dropped from 120 days to just 16, with bad weather causing crop failures in Europe and around the world. Despite being 10,000 miles away from New Hampshire, the eruption of Mount Tambora offers a clue to the potential aftermath of Yellowstone's eruption as Professor Rampino explains that droplets of sulfur dioxide are dispersed around the globe by stratospheric winds. These droplets cut off some of the sun's rays, and because of this the sun appears dimmer. 
This dimming effect led to the famine of 1816. Some estimates suggest Tambora killed 71,000 people, twice as many as the devastating 1883 Krakatoa eruption, mainly from starvation. The supervolcano will likely have an 